Welcome back. Big D Energy here on the Woodward Sports Network. We are live at the My Bookie Studios. My name is Neil Rule. He's D Mac. He's Joyk Bell. Happy to have you all along for the ride. But as we said, it's on and popping tonight. NFL football is back. It's on. It's on. And uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the Dallas Cowboys, uh, for. Now, you don't even have to say for entertainment purposes only because it's legal in the state of Michigan. The Tampa Bay Bucks are a seven and a half point favorite, uh, depending on where you shop. So, I mean, guys, y- you have to get into it, I think, right? You got Tom Brady. Uh, he's 91 years old, coming off a, a, another Super Bowl win, coming off that epic performance at the Super Bowl boat parade, uh, just, just doing it all. And, you know, we, we talked about the fact that America loves or hates the Dallas Cowboys. That's why they're in this game. But, Joyke, I mean, for me, and maybe you can explain this to me, because I think I speak for a lot of America when I say, when is it going to pop for this Cowboys team? Because every year we hear the same thing. Every year we see Zeke Elliott. Every year we see Dak Prescott, Cooper, all these guys. We're like, okay, this is the year. They're finally going to get it together. And Art talked about the fact that he thinks Brady will throw for 300 yards. Do you realize the Cowboys last year gave up 30 or more in just about half their games? I mean, their defense is atro- was atrocious last year. Was that talent? Or was I, I, that's why I'm asking you. I mean, you tell me, It man. could be both. A little bit of both. Little, both can I mean, be true. I mean, and then, you got to understand, you're about to play against the GOAT. All right? You're about to play against the GOAT. And I remember when we had Devin Garner on there, we talk about quarterbacks. We talk about how a quarterback can ignite your team. We have a quarterback in your backfield. Uh, in your offensive backfield who will always have you an opportunity to score, uh, opportunity to win games, or have put you in a position to be put in a position to, to, to win a game. And so um, when you look at Tampa Bay, I mean, they're loaded. I mean, they got – whenever you have – you know the term, you never bet against the GOAT. Right? Right. You never bet against Tom <laughs> right. Brady. And um, if you guys don't understand you, – You might be able to do it and win once. Yeah, but you ain't not, making a living. You're not, doing you're that. not doing it consistently. Right. So when I played uh, in New Orleans, we'll have this thing after practice where it would be me, uh, it'll be Drew Brees, um, Chase Daniels, um, Sean Canfield, and a couple other coaches. After every practice, we'll go, and I thought I could throw, and so we'll have these throwing competitions of either trying to hit a bag in the, in the corner of the end zone, or they'll put a dummy on the back of a, a, a golf cart and drive it uh, across the field. You got to try to hit it as many times as you can before it gets across. And we'll have these competitions every day. And I remember I won one time, but we'll bet every day. And the tight end coach looked, he said, listen, don't bet with these guys every day. You might get one, but you're going to lose a lot more than you win. All right. So that's kind of what it is when you bet against Brady. You don't want to bet against Brady. Uh, not at all. But, you know, the – the Cowboys have a lot of things that's unknown. Like one of their star um, linemen won't be there. Um, Zach Martin, we don't know if he's playing or not. We don't know what Derek Prescott is going to uh, is going to do off his coming back off of his injury. We don't know. Uh, he still has to prove that you know he's still the same quarterback. He can still make plays. Now he still he has some playmakers offensively with Ezekiel Elliott, um, Mario Cooper. Yeah, 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 we, yeah we know Cooper. we know yeah, the so, cast. So, yeah. so, so, so he has some he has some people back there that can help him out. But overall, when you have Tom Brady in that backfield and you have the Dominican Sue coming after you and you have all these variables, um, we don't still we still don't know how he feels about his knee. There's so move? many more it's, questions it's, uh, but that's about just, Dallas than there are about Tampa. We're pretty much to expect what Tampa's gonna do off at you know, come out and pretty much yeah, you know, they'll probably not be up to speed of the machine of the Super Bowl, you know, final when we saw them, but they're going to be pretty close because they got this the same lineup back, the same guys running the same thing. You met, mentioned Zach Martin missing. You got, you know, what's Ezekiel going to do? What's uh, Dak Prescott going to do? There's so many questions, and my question to you guys is: Is Mike McCarthy, the coach for for the Cowboys? You know, immediately on this hot seat. Is this something that could only go bad for the Cowboys if they do get blown out? Well, I, I think if you're the coach of the Cowboys, you're on a perpetual hot seat. Yeah, I mean, that's just true. the nature of that job. Mm. And But for whatever reason, I mean, what? They, they've won, what, two playoff games in the last 15 years or last 20 years, whatever that number is, and one they had to steal 
you know, when they stole one on a pass interference call, I, I don't want to remind everyone, but it, that's the way it did go down. How yeah. big, uh, Joey, coming from your perspective, actually playing the game, how important is that first game? Especially, I mean, for both Tampa Bay and Dallas, it's the first game of the season. But talk about your experience with the first game in general, like week one of the NFL. How important is it for I the players? I think it just helps to set the tone for the rest of the season. Uh, but at the same time, it's, it's not going to um, solidify the rest of the season. But it's a good... Uh, it's a good kind of um, to kind of size itself up, uh, and then give you opportunity to know what you need to work well, on. Well, I got a, I got a, a piggyback on that question. I mean, I would feel, I would think that the way you feel walking into the facility on Tuesday after Week One is magnified, depending on what happens. You you feel a little better, or you might feel a little worse. Just I know there's a lot of football left to be played, mm-hmm. but I, that first one I would think probably hits a little different, right? All right, so. And so usually, regardless of win or lose, um, depending on who the coach is, how it works, you'll be walking in that thing on Monday. <laughs> you'll be walking right back in there on Monday. And what they do is um, – But that's voluntary, though, Joy. No, 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 that's not voluntary. <laughs> you're coming in. You're coming in. But what they do do, uh, you come in for like the first half of the season on Monday. Even win or lose, you're, you're in there. The next half of the season, at least this is how Carl will do it, they kind of give us more incentive, the extra push. If you win on Sunday, you have Monday off, you have Tuesday off, and you come back in on Wednesday. And so when they – I'm telling you, when they tell you you got time off in the NFL, that feels better than a lot of things in life. <laughs> hey, it feels they, better than a lot of things in life. When they you tell you you got me? time off, they say, see you on Wednesday. Do you Have you ever seen, like, the hard knocks or anything where they or, or any type of true. footage where the coach said, all right, see you Wednesday. And the whole team locker room, whole team goes crazy. Yeah. I never seen a guy go crazy when he climaxed like that. I never seen anyone jumping up and down. Oh, right, are you gonna say that? Hey, you jump after. up and down and, and, and scream for you. You know, I, I've never seen it. I'm saying when you had time off in <laughs> this thing we call the NFL, you can't beat it. Yeah. No, it's the same thing in hockey. I mean, and it's one thing too. Yeah. But what's bigger is if you're on the road. And you got a, and you got a day and and to say but you plan a West Coast trip and Scotty goes all right boys uh, we don't play Phoenix till Tuesday when tonight no practice till Monday it's Saturday night in L A <laughs> mm. you think there's you'll incentive? die you'll die there's on that money ice, on yeah. the board there's guys like thousand dollars for the game winner there's like five hundred you know what I mean guy like that. Uh, there's always that. There'd be incentive. But you played against your former team. Guys would put money up for the win or, or different like incentive like that, which would go to the team party fund. But, yeah, you, you're playing a little extra hard on a Saturday night in L.A. When you, if you got the next day off. Mm. Truth. You know, Joy, too, because I did want to talk about this as well. And this Tampa Bay Buccaneers team, and, look, we all know it's, it's Brady's team. And Brady is a reason, you know, he's he's a straw that's stirring this drink. But you know me, I'm a big financials guy, right? Mm. Brady's rolling in this year at a ten and a half million dollar cap hit. Sue is a three million dollar cap hit. Uh, Leonard Fournette's three point two million. Antonio Brown's a three million dollar cap hit. Gronk is a three million dollar cap hit. When Brady shows up, everybody falls in line, and that's that's got just as much of a reason as to why they're great. Is because if Tom Brady's going to come in at a pay cut, and Brady's always been like that his Brady, whole career, his entire career. You mentioned yeah. everybody. You mentioned everybody there's already got their money though. Sure. You know what I'm saying? That that makes that makes a little bit of a difference when you already got when you already you know have some money. But it's about winning, and then he's yeah, got what it is contagious because they all it bought is. in. They want to come back to win. So I'm telling you because at this point right now, because I'm telling you, the Dominican Sue is a businessman. <laughs> He is a businessman. Yeah. So if he's taking a pay cut, he's getting it elsewhere. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Right? He's getting it elsewhere. And the more you win, the more the money comes rolling in. And, and that's been, yeah, and, and you're Here. right. Sue, Sue has done that his, his entire career. And, you know, he's. <laughs> I, need my, I need my bag. I need my money. And then we can talk. The other talk. Luxuries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can talk. The, but I need my bag first. <laughs> I, need, I need that. I need my money. So. But that's always been the case with him, man. You know where you you know where you stand with Ndamukong Sue. Oh yeah. And and again, I'll always go back to it, Joy. I've said it to you. You know, looked you right in your eye and said to me that was the day the music died when when Sue 
Because yeah. the Lions were, they were knocking on the door. They were a pass interference call yeah. away. Yeah. But the day that Sue walked out the door was the day the music died. To yeah. me. The, the identity. He took, he left, our identity left with him. Yeah. Uh, because that makes only, me feel good, though, that, that you, you know, you're on board with that. No, I'm on board. That, the, our, our defensive identity left when Sue left. Because not only did they pull Sue, but they, you know, a couple other guys left as well that had that same type of mentality defensively. Sure. Uh, from, you know, Nick Fairley, C.J. Mosley. Um, those guys had that dog in them, too. That dog, that gorilla that I like. That gorilla. That gorilla that I like. <laughs> and uh, when they left, it kind of, you know, you can kind of tell um, we were deflated a little bit. Yeah, you know, summer's getting ready to leave, too, Joyke. Those warm temperatures. Oh, we still got a little bit left. 